hostile as before. Before it was very hostile. <laughs> and now, before the battle begins, everybody's like, hey, what's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this, Friends and stuff up? like this. Friendly and stuff. Friendly. <laughs> Back in the days, no way. No way! <laughs> no friends. You get yeah. was enemies. Battling is basically taking up a challenge. You know, when you were battling against an opponent, that's how people see it from the outside when they would look into the cipher. And that's basically your big test for yourself. It's also the big test for your opponent. Uh, because you need somebody to get the best out of you and when it's time to shine uh, can you be a professional and summon that energy and showcase that magic you know it's really something that's ego it's an ego thing and which is okay because uh, you, you have a name, everybody has a name, and everybody wants to represent that name. So uh, your name might be Anna, and then your B-girl name would be Anna Vicious or something. And, and then you would, Anna would be a nice person, but if she's battling on the floor, she could still be nice, but be vicious, you know? <laughs> Uh, GK. <laughs> and GK stands for my real name, uh, Gavin Kempenaar. I live in Amsterdam. I'm a dancer, uh, specifically uh, breaking. Um, so yeah, I started when I was small. I yeah, was basically taught uh, the hip hop steps when I was seven, six years old. And it wasn't breaking then by then, but I was really intrigued by people doing uh, great big movements like Spider-Man and uh, I was a big fan of those Kung Fu movies. Um, basically people being very dynamic as I, as I found myself to be as well. So, so I tried to emulate uh, being Spider-Man when I was small and take this state of mind in my uh, life. Um, being artistic with my body, uh, trying to maintain my body, uh, thinking of ways uh, to move smartly so you can enjoy your body uh, for a long time. You are trying to move away from the word breakdancing. Mm -hmm. What do you prefer calling this? Yeah, I would call it uh, the art form breaking. Breaking. Yeah, and what I would say is if you dissect uh, hip hop in a few pieces, so you would say you, are, you have hip hop the music, mm -hmm. then you have uh, people that do the lyrical stuff, so mm -hmm. MCs yeah. slash rappers. When I say, what time is it? You guys say, show time! And you have the DJs. Mm -hmm. What I said, we are the DJs that spin the music. So. Then you have the graffiti artists that make the art, that art basically the alphabet of uh, the hip hop. And then I would say you have the kung fu of hip hop, and that's the break. Okay. And so that's kind of fighting style. Uh, and also, when people do certain steps in break, it's some, some, some things come from hip hop or boxing. So, so it's like dancing, but it's in dancing, you know? Like, yeah. So hidden, hidden, hidden martial arts in break. But the same for Capoeira, it's also hidden martial arts in, yes. in the dance. Yeah, that's really cool. I like that come through of dancing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Break, yeah, yeah. breaking. <laughs> yeah, right. And the fifth element I have to to is the community. So that's the whole thing together. Yeah, uh, the community. Is break dancing more towards a dance? Or is it more yeah. a sport? So it's both. Okay. But if you want to ask for for uh, money from the government for art projects or great projects or doing some events, then they always have to choose, yeah, but it's not an art because it's an extreme sport because you guys go so hard. But 
Yes, but we have to find out every move that we do is not written in the book. It's something that we have to create from nothing. Yeah. So it's an art yeah. that needs high maintenance. The way how we are moving usually isn't normal for anyone. It's always already like it's very like, extreme, you know. But not everybody is doing yoga, so that's also kind of extreme for people, I would say. And but this is just faster paced yoga. Just break is faster yoga. You know, we yeah. we keep the poses, but not as long as yoga. But just enough to showcase that it seems impossible, but it's not. You know, and, 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 and everybody can do it. Doesn't matter what the age is. It's about what you have still, and what and how can you utilize that and create an art form or art piece of your own body. It's like you creating art, even what's on the dance floor, the moves, the shapes you're making, is creating art. So, yeah, you don't know if somebody likes it, yes or no, it doesn't matter. You are creating. Well, I've noticed uh, with the training right now that there were a lot of different people, like you mentioned, there's a person who uh, came from a different country, almost like a refugee, yeah. lost. Yeah. Some people along the way, there's a mother who's uh, got a grown-up son also doing yeah. baking really well. Yeah. So different people from different walks of life and uh, they, like when I talked to them it's felt like they were just here to de-stress and relax and this was their time to unwind. Mm. Now what does break, breaking do for you? Uh, personally? Yeah, for me personally, yeah. so mental health but also mental for my physique. Yeah. And, uh, but I uh, definitely love the breaking because of um, the different perspectives that there, that there are present. Being able to have musicality, like you're also practicing like your body, you know, it's, just, you know, it's, it's a workout, it's rhythm, you know, it makes you happy. <laughs> so yeah, for me it's like the ultimate workout actually. And it's something I love to do. I would, would be able to pass on to my kids when, whenever I have kids later. <laughs> I can say it uh, saved my life. I had something to do. But the most important thing was uh, when I first heard uh, rap music on the radio. It was Sugar Hill Gang in 78. That was a uh, mind-changing thing. When I heard that, I thought, this is it! <laughs> what I want is for me to feel more freedom, you know? So free, freedom of movement, freedom of being, so yeah. I love breaking, you know, it makes me feel good when I'm breaking, you know, community, connect with other breakers, connect with other uh, kids, they want to learn the style, learn them to be proud of themselves. That's how it started for me. I was like, I started with this, this world. I can do that much better, bro. Yeah. I need to do that much better. I, I need to do it better. Just You're constantly challenging yourself. Yeah, yeah. I know how it started. It's not something that it's just like, whoa, that move is so sick. I need to feel how the move feels and to do better. called uh, Wild Style, a friend of mine uh, called uh, All Star Fresh came with a videotape and uh, he showed me that and um, I saw it, I saw some people uh, b-boying on the ground and I thought this is it and it changed my life. Mr. Solo in the place to be, old school b-boy since the 80s, early 80s. What I like about the b-boy community, it's, it's, it's chill, it's relaxed, it's not hostile. When you see the R&B scene, it's totally different. 
So that's why I love the B-boy scene. I'm proud of breaking, of the breaking community all over the world because when I was like breaking, there were like black men, the Hispanics, and a little, a few, yeah, white guys, a few. Now you have the Arabics, now the Asians, they came, then you have the Arabics, and it went then all over the world. Now you have Russia, from India, the boys, the Pakistan, uh, you have like uh, Africa, it's all over, yeah? So it's not only the Hispanics and the black started it, it started there, but now it's all over the world. And that's what I like to see what elephants, how breaking elephants like. The whole world is doing it now. So back in the days there were a lot of guys breaking. Yeah, you know, guys. Good were, were girls. Yeah. But they weren't specifically like At dominant. Yes, now we have to be, yes. It's also nice that you have a, a, a lot of people, but I think it's also a lot of different uh, generations, right? Yeah, generations. I stimulate the youngest generation, and the young one, I get inspired by, by their moves, the way they think, totally different, you know? I grew up with b-boying K, man, to exist. I'm 59. The nice thing in my time was, First, there was like a six step. Everybody was doing six step, six step, six step. You master it, you can do six step. After that, backspin, everybody's backspin. After that, windmill, everybody do windmill, you know, and headspin, everybody learns headspin. So you learned each time one thing and you did it well, mm. you know. Now there is so much when you start being boy, there are like 1,100 moves. <laughs> You know, <laughs> but back then there was nothing. Yeah. You know, that's the difference. Yeah, now it's YouTube. Uh, yeah, now it's YouTube. Uh, these kids look at YouTube like five days and do everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back in the days, I had nobody to show me how to do a windmill. Nobody. You have to imagine it, right? You know how I learned to do some moves with the videotape and I put it on slow motion. I did like, good, and I look, good, good, rewind, so good. Forward, okay, a thousand times, <laughs> like that. That's the way I learned. Sick, right? Primitive, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really personal, be a boy. You know, you have to feel it, huh? The community, but this community gives you love. So that's what attracts a lot of people. Also, maybe in normal life you can do nothing. But in a b-boy world, you you will get accepted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, in the in the real world, you, the world you can be a, a nerd. Nobody looks at you at school, and when you come here, everybody respects you. Try to learn something, and you can become somebody that everybody yeah. looks up to. Say, hey, man! And you're good for what you you can do. That wow, that's yeah. really nice that you yeah. found that out. It's, it's also good for shy people, b-boying. Yeah. Yeah, it goes away. <laughs> yeah, it goes away. Yeah, you get, you get like this. Like self-assured, right? Yes, one hundred percent. You learn. I, I, for me as well. Like I stutter. Mm -hmm. So, because uh, uh, literally, I felt when I was younger age, I felt in the back of my head. So, mm -hmm. something with the brain, you know. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn to speak a little bit uh, better. But then, with the, with the, with the breaking, I think it, 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 it also gave something like uh, how to perform, you know, how to kind of helps me to speak better or to be feel self-assured. That's it's also accessible to everybody. All colors, all, yeah. all ages, you know, and all body types, which I mean uh, even people that are uh, handicapped yes. find their body in this art form. So it's not about I got two arms, I got two legs, you know and uh, now I can break. It doesn't matter. Maybe you don't have any legs. Maybe yeah. you don't have any arms. You can still do the breaking. Yeah. You, know, you, just, you have to be like water, my friend. But that's a different story. <laughs> so yeah, the big girls back then there were not that many. Like all over the world, there were maybe like five when I started. Uh, Maybe a bit more, but 
now there are much more B-girls, you know. And uh, yeah, but then you always have to battle the boys and you have to practice with the boys. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's so different than now. They're like B-girl community, uh, communities. My name is Lomo. I'm from Amsterdam. My beagle name is uh, Molecule. I'm 47 years old and I live in Amsterdam. And I'm breaking since uh, 95. Your breaking was back then, it was like a lifestyle. It's what you did every day. You talk about it every day, you do it every day. So, yeah, it's a lifestyle. Then, if you had a kid, you would stop breaking. But the difference is that I took my my kid everywhere to jams. But for me, I stopped breaking. Oh. And so my son, baby boy, was starting to break. And he's wow. part of team now. So uh, yeah, he started breaking when he was one and a half. I teach uh, I, all the stuff what I was uh, able to do. <laughs> I was teaching him. <laughs> to prepare for the Olympics. I'm actually quite a shy person, you know. I don't like to... Uh, I'm not an extrovert. But I also know I can do it. So I should do it. <laughs> And I have also then the message like if if I do it and people see it like for example B girls then they have hope that they can do it as well. So that is my mission, you know. I have to show it. And also of my age, like 47, I'm still breaking. I can still do standing on my hands. I can still do a little bit. Yeah, you need to be an example. And that's how it was also back in the days. For me, it was really important. It doesn't really matter what you do. You do what you love, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Solid ground. It's a really, it's a really good dancing school. Uh, and uh, the owner, Brian, uh, hosted this space because there wasn't like any breaking open practices at one point, like two, two, two years ago, I think. Yeah. There was nothing. There was, Amsterdam was quite lacking at this stage and Brian offered a space here and he's also like an OG breaker. So. And the floors are really nice, like I've been to tons of studios where the floors are like icky or a bit like... Yeah. But the, the, yeah, the floors here are wonderful. Specific place, the solid ground movement is from uh, Brian. Mm -hmm. and his school is called the Rocking Chairs. He does this with uh, the other guys that you just saw. The first 51, 50 plus break group. And when we was like in uh, Holland's Got Talent, we like. We were like 40, 45 plus, but are we all uh, over 50 now? <laughs> so the oldest is like almost 60, and the oldest he is 65 or 67. The boss here, Brian, we call him Beasties. Uh, we got Funky Jerk, we got Solo, we got yeah, me, Papa Brick. He started the crew also. Yeah, we're really proud to have him in, on, on board because he. He pushed us to a level like that, that we still exist. They all are from Amsterdam, around Amsterdam, and they're all about 40 years old or like 50, and you're still rocking, so they're like <laughs> rocking chairs, you know. And uh, but Brian runs this as a uh, say a stichting, so it's not an official company. It's a company, but uh, they can make profit, you know. Yeah. This is for the arts. It's like a non-profit. Yeah. Yes. Organization which exactly. helps people, but you still need something to sustain it. Exactly. My name is Popsky, the living legend. I'm 52 years old. I'm one of the first 
B-Boys in Amsterdam or in Holland. First generation B-Boys. I didn't know the culture exactly, but I learned it just by seeing and by hearing. Because the music came in, African Babetta, Shannon, Captain Rap Bad Times, Run DMC, the early rap music. So that's how I started breaking. And that's how I learned the community. <laughs> in different ways and yeah that, that, that just came out of my mind and I started developing that type of stuff. Here we go to uh, Olympics. So breaking is the next next new sport. Olympics today, this year, or for a few months, then you see breaking in Olympics. So I hope there's gonna be make a breaking a little bit more wider, like that's what I wanna see. Bigger like the rap did and like the DJ did, you know, and like the graffiti, because the graffiti is big. So everybody did good except the breaking. So now I hope the breaking is gonna be like the next uh, multi-billion uh, business. <laughs> you know, that's what I wanna say for breaking. Keep up the goods, practice, practice, practice. And uh, I see you guys when I see you guys. Yeah, yeah, very good outlet. 